Um, second of all, yes, I have been fighting DCS for almost two years. And I have done everything they've asked of me and more. And I have trial in January and they want to do a severance trial. But I was just wondering, like, what can I do to present to the judge to show them that I've done everything? Because like, kind of like at court, they kind of tell them what they want to tell them and it's lies. Attorney Benson Davis, and this is The Secret, How to Fight CPS and Win. I'm joined this morning by my co-host, our co-host, Amanda Sisko, and also Heather. Heather is the co-host for the show on Sunday evenings, the live stream, We Survive CPS. Uh, Amanda, Heather, good morning. How are you guys doing? Good morning, Ben. How are you? Heather, how are you this morning? I'm doing well this morning, Vince. How are you doing? Doing good, doing good. Um, so what, we have a, an abbreviated show today, and it's um, at a different time today because of USC football. So the show today is from 11 to 1 a.m., excuse me, 1 p.m., just two hours. So we're going to um, go ahead and start with our first call. Let's talk to Virginia from Arizona. Virginia, did you have a story to tell or a question to ask? Yes. Um, uh, first, I want to say hi. And um, second of all, yes, I have been fighting DCS for almost two years. And I have done everything they've asked of me and more. And I have trial in January and they want to do a severance trial. But I was just wondering, like, what can I do to present to the judge to show them that I've done everything? Because like, kind of like at court, they kind of tell them what they want to tell them. And it's lies. You know, when you say a severance, do you mean they're trying to terminate your parental rights? Yes, they are. Okay. Um, well, if your case was in California, this is what I would tell you to do. And you might want to check this with a local attorney there in Arizona. But you have uh, time to complete your service plan and to file a petition in California. It's called a 388 petition to try to get more family reunification services or get the children even returned pending that severance hearing. Um, but here's the important thing. And, you know, I've been talking about this all week with people. You got to come up with a plan. You got to have a strategy mm -hmm. with your attorney. Do not go to court and think that the judge is just going to do the right thing. Because, first of all, what you think mm -hmm. is right, what you think is right, is different from what the judge thinks is right, and that's because you guys are coming up from it from um, different reference points, right? So, yeah. so come up with a plan, implement the plan, and you stick with that plan. But you got to talk to your attorney, and you got to come up with that plan first. Have you done all of the reunification services you were supposed to do successfully? Yes. Yes, I have. I've been doing this for about two years. And then I just had my uh, new baby almost in on August 1st, and they took him as well. And they told me that my caseworker told me she was not going to take the baby and to have um, safety monitors. And I gave her about five or six of them. We had a TDM, and they kept, they didn't really have a good reason to take the baby. And they did. Well. Have you gone to court regarding the baby? I have court October 22nd for the baby. Okay. So it's important that you and your attorney are on the same page for that hearing. That's going to be a very important hearing, right? Yes. Okay. So come up with a plan. Come up with a strategy. Is your attorney a court-appointed attorney or a private attorney? Well, the thing is, I had a private attorney, and I have I paid about $7,000 to my attorney and they still took the baby, like, and I, so I said, you know what, what's the, like, what's the point of everything? And, um, I, the, at the, the other court, they put in a good report for me saying I'm making progress. I'm doing what I got to do. And then, so I said, okay, well, maybe I don't, I'm going to get my kids back because the case manager kept telling me I'm going to get my kids back before December. So I said, okay, well, I'm going to go with the public defender now. 
And then as soon as I did that, we had a next court, they asked the judge to sever my rights. And I don't understand. It went from a good report saying I'm on track, I'm making behavioral changes, stuff like that, to we want to sever her rights. Well, Heather, have you been able to hear this call? I know you just drive the live, uh, joined the live stream. But Heather is from Arizona. She's a okay. mother, um, and she actually beat CPS. Heather, do you have any um, anything that you can tell our listener, uh, Virginia, from Arizona? Yes. So I am from Arizona, and I have heard the call. Um, I just got my video up. But um, as far as my case went, because I came across the same instances as you as far as the discrepancies between reality and what was re being presented, to the judge, um, they say one thing to your face and write another thing in a report. So the biggest yeah. aspect is recording. Arizona is a one-party state. So you can record without their knowledge. You are the only party that has to give that authorization. And it's also Arizona DCS policy that there are any of their employees can be recorded at any time. So that's the number one thing. When you're able to put their words against their writing, that's where I saw di differences in my case when the judge was able to see those discrepancies. So I feel that in Arizona, a lot of the times, the judges are very misled by the department. I'm not sure the reason behind it and why DCS employees in Arizona do so. Um, but... The biggest thing is making sure that you're able to present your side as well. I'm not sure. I believe you said you had a public defender at this point. So really yeah. just putting that communication together. You have to be your own advocate and say, here is my evidence. This is what I am ordering you to go ahead and file. So that's the advice that I would give on it. Um, it's just making sure you have everything together and you definitely stand up for your right to be presented in mm -hmm. the courtroom properly. Amanda. I, I know that you've had a case in Virginia. What do you think about uh, telling Virginia from, that was a double entendre right there. <laughs> you have a case in the state of Virginia. What could you tell Virginia from the state of Arizona? <laughs> Can't hear you, Amanda. Sorry. Sorry about that, Vince. I was on mute. Um, our recording laws are similar. Um, the, I mean, with, with Virginia, the family court abuse is everywhere, every state. And yeah. you hear a lot of the things from case to case. And I'm so sorry. I can't imagine the shock that you're going through right now, mom, um, with, with going from reunification to severance. Um, yeah. I, I, do you know, do you know like what triggered it or was it just, did it seem to be out of the blue? It did. It didn't, it was going well. Like I had all the reports and my public defender was kind of shocked too. She's like, why are we asking for severance? If last court report, you're saying, oh, she's making changes. She's doing good. She's on track. But then they asked the judge for severance and the judge had like a timeline. He said, it's too much time. The kids have been out of the home. So he had to uh, like kind of agree. And then he's given me four more months till trial to see and then I I called my caseworker right after the court and I told her that she's wrong and I called her supervisor and I had a talk with them I told them they're both wrong for what they're doing and they know it and I have a meeting with them this upcoming Wednesday in person to they they want to sit down and see what what more I can do but they know that they're wrong for doing what they're doing I don't disagree but it at doesn't all mean they're gonna, it's going to stop them from doing it you know Virginia the, so, the, the, I want to make sure that you have something very clear Okay. Okay. When you say they're wrong in doing that, they, I think you're talking about morally or ethically. You're not talking about legally because they can do what they're doing. Yeah. Okay. So, you know, I tell people this and a lot and they don't like to hear this. Let's take the morality and the ethics out of this. OK, don't be outraged because some social worker is doing something that she can do legally. All right. Mm -hmm. Your response has to be non-emotional. You know, yeah. you have to do it Amen. legally. You have to do it strategically. You have to do it with your lawyer. That's what you have to focus on. And, it, you know, you have a well, not a lot, but you have time that you can get things done and get things processed and get things filed with the court. Take this time and use it valuably. OK, use it like, you know, the world counts on it and it does count on it. You know, the other thing that I wanted to tell you is 
If your kids are not with friendly relatives or friendly family friends, you need to talk to your lawyer now about doing that. Okay, getting the children yeah. placed with with a friendly uh, family friend or a friendly relative. Okay, Virginia, I want to thank you for calling yeah. and thank you for listening. Call us back in about three or four weeks and let us know how things are going. Okay. All right, we're going to have to take our first break now. This is the secret: how to fight CPS and win. We'll be right back after these messages. Oh. 